Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. Today I'm going to be chatting about Highland Park Cash Strength Batch 3. 64.1% alcohol, very very boozy. Uh, came with a box, but that box is also damaged. Seems these things don't travel well in shipping. And it did come with a little leaflet, which I've annoyingly lost because I've done a lot of cleaning recently. And essentially this is 100% European oak and it is smokier than the other Highland Parks that are generally released. Uh, we do know that Highland Park have two different peat levels. I believe one is sort of like 12 ppm and the other one is a lot more. And they do tend to vat those together to create a different feel of product. Um, with the batch two video, I didn't expect it to do as well as it did, but it did really well. So I bought batch three, still pretty good, 60 quid a bottle um, from a big distillery because some are charging more. Wonderful color, um, is non-chill filtered. One would assume natural color. I can't actually, it does say it somewhere in the box. Bear with me. Yeah, it does confirm it's non-chill filtered, but I can't see if it's a natural color anywhere on there. Oh, you know, there you go. Naturally deep golden color. So we have that confirmed on the side of the box. I've tried to review this whiskey five times um, when I was ill, which is why I've not seen videos for two weeks, and it, it wasn't giving me a lot. So the illness, I just put it down to that, that I wasn't able to smell too much. Um, but I had this in the glass for about an hour, so we'll see if it's changed. There was a particularly interesting note on the nose and the taste, which hopefully is still there because it was really interesting but I do hope it's opened up a little bit more as well. So let's smell it. All right, so straight away, it is coming across as a lot sweeter this time. That interesting note I was talking about that was coming across a lot was almost like a chicken broth, chicken stock, almost MSG quality to it. I don't know if you've ever dipped your finger in MSG and tasted it, but it tastes like a savory alternative to sugar. Um, just tastes like kind of crystallized chicken stock. That's all this smell and tasted of and finished with for quite a while but automatically now having got more of my reception receptors back there is a more sort of candied candied nuts like a pecan maple thing going on with it. There are official tasting notes on the box I've refused to look at them um, even but just by like glancing over to look for stuff but there's nothing distinctively Highland Park about the nose. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I say that, maybe there is a bit of that classic heather honey feel to it. But it's candied, it's sweet, it isn't really coming across as smoky at all. Like, not at all. But I've always found that as an issue with things like, um, it's a bit more extreme, but things like Octomore, where they don't actually smell that smoky just because of the amount of alcohol and phenol and cask influence that's hitting you. But yeah, these beautiful kind of maple, pecan, pastry, the like brown butter, burnt butter, very culinary notes to this whiskey. Apologies if you can hear some soft snoring, the dog is asleep just there. Not too dissimilar to, to batch two from what I remember. I gave batch two an eight out of 10, I believe. It was the same score as what I gave gold spot, although the Highland Park was much more memorable. Um, again, no age statement with this. I don't see that as a, a huge issue. I did talk about it a little bit in the batch two video. Um, realistically, they could put it on there. They haven't. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it is like the smallest pet peeve. Let's dive in, see if it's as sweet as it is on the tape, on the smell. Whoa. That thing's just fluid like all of my nose. You can definitely tell that's European oak. There is like not one single 
element of sweetness to that taste at all. European oak is always like funkier and drier and tannic. And there's the smoke. That's quite interesting. So step by step with the taste, we have automatically this huge hit of what reminds me of cigar leaf and cigar box. The candied thing's gone, there's no maple, there's no pecan, nothing at all. It's a cliche thing, European oak, we assume sherry. There is a raisiny sultana thing to it, but it's like distilled down and compressed. It's like uber dry fruit. You can kind of feel it, you know, like they're, they're so like dried out that they're kind of like, when you chew them, they're sticking into like your teeth. Very toffeed style fruits to that. Not in sweetness, but just in texture. That funky note that I was getting of like MSG and like chicken broth and chicken stock and salty things is still there. It's not as prominent, so that must have just been my body not being on form in terms of smelling. And there is a smokiness to the finish, and it is almost like a... It's in that Ben Romack style smoke sort of window. Uh, it's kind of minerally, it's a little bit chalky. It's not antisep antiseptic, that's not a particularly right word. It's not like TCP or iodine, it's nothing like that. It's not your Laphroaigs or Lagavulins. The saltiness of the whiskey is incredible. Um, I'm annoyed I lost that little booklet, but given how much info they gave us on that, I would be intrigued to know where the wood was sourced from, if it was particularly coastal regions, if it's just the distillery character having that salty impact. Because when you think of Highland Park, salt isn't really the word. Slightly smoky, they always say heather honey, apple, it can get really exotic sometimes. But I don't know if they've ever had a Highland Park that's salty. And then to smell it again after finishing it with these kind of minerally salty coastal notes, to smell it, it's almost like a different whiskey. You're instantly infused with like candied almonds and that maple thing again. Something I don't do a lot on this show is add water. And I've never actually added water to this whiskey. So I'm just going to, not scientific about this, I'm just going to add a bit to it because it is quarter past one in the afternoon. Got quite a lot to do today. So I'm gonna mix that in. We'll smell, taste, and finish again. Apologies if this is a very long video, but I'm just intrigued by this whiskey quite a lot. Nose roughly remains the same, but I'm getting more of a citrus fruit to it. There's more of like a lemon, lemony or like orange juice thing. Certainly more citrus with a little bit of water. The intense sweetness has died off. There's still sweetness to it, but it's no longer these kind of sticky sweet maple things. It's more like a... something baked, like a, like a flapjack, something with honey in it, something with maybe, you know, loads of butter in it. Yeah, like flapjack, that kind of thing, like golden syrup, um, treacle. One thing I forgot to mention, without the water, incredibly dry, very powerful. Put that down to both the ABV and the American oak with that small amount of water. I'm seeing more classic Highland Park 12 notes of like coffee, like quite heavily roasted coffee, a little bit of chocolate, honey, heather honey. The raisiny thing is still kind of there, but what is remaining around my mouth is this kind of flavour of things that have been taken to the limit of like caramelization so we've got like honeycomb a burnt toffee cinder toffee there's like a bitterness of like um parsley 
and I really got into um, Sandfire recently, uh, which again is like incredibly salty and slightly bitter. So all these like coastal herbs, not that parsley's a coastal herb, but very green things. And then the nose now, after having all that, is again just like salt, melted butter. The Christmas cake thing's coming through a little bit more. Again, I'm unsure on the amount of sherry in this, but they did say a majority European oak. So one can only assume that sherry. A very fun whiskey. Um, I am going to score that slightly higher than batch two. For me, that gets an eight and a half. There is more going on. It's certainly more contrasting. I will need to do an experiment with batch two and three side by side with and without water to see which one is in general more interesting. Uh, but yeah, that gets an eight and a half from me. A lot more going on. Beautifully contrasting nose, palette and finish with and without water. Um, but fair play Highland Park because these releases are really cool. They're still relatively affordable. Um, and it does show what you've got in your warehouse, which I quite like as well. But yeah, thank you all for watching. This has been Whiskey Wednesday, and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.